comedy festivals or my Joey Diaz says this and I agree it's like sleepaway camp for comedians um, day one we did a storyteller show a mushroom storyteller show and uh, some people on, in the show were on mushrooms and I was and so was uh, Dan Soder uh, a couple other people pushed out but they told mushroom stories at least and then um, and the rest of the week was just great but then later uh, my friend, who gets weird about drugs sometimes, so I won't say his name, but um, uh, one of the guys who pushed out said that he got uh, a line on some mushrooms. So we got some, and he was like, what should we get, like a quarter ounce? Is that going to be enough for me, you, and this other person? And I'm like, yeah, that's going to be plenty, but like, um, fuck it, let's just get an ounce. You don't think anybody will want them? It was 100 bucks too, for the ounce. Good price. Uh, and so then... Um, <laughs> So then the night of the, the last party, they have this giant party at the end of the festival. Uh, and everybody gets drunk, the agents and managers and comedians, club owners, bookers, um, industry executives, all those people. They just get bombed. It really is just a way for them to get drunk and, and party with each other. It's really nice. Everyone lets, you know, lets their guard down and just has fun. And like uh, 10 to 15 people were on mushrooms at that party. It was really great. You would see somebody and they'd be sweating and they'd be like, you all right? And they'd be like, yeah, I'm great. And they're like, okay, all right, cool. I saw people just lying in the grass, staring at the, staring at the, at the uh, stars. It was really great. You see fucking club owners getting them. And by the way, I had, I had mushrooms in my pocket for a while because I, I, had, I had a few doses on me and I took one dose. And then, um, and then uh, I would go up to people. I took probably two-thirds of a dose. I just wanted to have a good time. Um, and I would go up to people, and they, we'd talk and stuff about drinking or whatever, and I'd say, uh, do you want mushrooms? And this girl, Julie, was like, mm, I don't know, may, uh, maybe. And I was like, nope, you don't get them. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, you didn't answer the right way. And she goes, no, I was saying I was going to take them. I'm like, no, you weren't saying that. You were hemming and hawing. And those aren't the people who want mushrooms right now. And then I asked my other friend, Kylie, Julie's friend, like an hour later, I was like, hey, do you want mushrooms? And she was like, yes. Oh, my God, you have mushrooms? Yes. And I was like, well, then you get them because that's the right answer. Um, <laughs> I got to give them someone else, too. I was like, do you want some? like, yep. And I was like, okay, here you go. It was great. It was really great. It's great when fucking 15 people are on shrooms at a party. The only problem was you go inside where the music is loud and everyone gets in your face and tries to talk to you. And you're like, whoa, this is too much. I can't handle this right now. Uh, anyway, back to the episode. Um, so Bonnie McFarlane and I talked. We went to my, uh, my room at the Hyatt, and we talked about chicks and comedy for a while. She just did a movie um, uh, about all this stuff, um, about women in comedy, whether or not they're funny. And she did a documentary. She got Chris Rock to be in it and Joan Rivers and all these people. But we'll talk about it. But um, uh, she also has a podcast, by the way, if you uh, are interested, if you like her, go uh, check out My Wife Hates Me podcast. It's, it's, Bo- it's Bonnie and her husband, Rich Voss. Um, I haven't listened to it, but I'm sure they're good. They're both really funny. Um, so check that out. And then here's the ep- – oh, sponsors. Sorry. Uh, go to Amazon.com. If you go to Amazon.com – I'll just keep this quick. If you go to Amazon.com, go through my website, AriTheGreat.com. There's a banner on the side. Uh, and by the way, I heard Amazon is going to start charging tax soon. So hurry up and go soon before they do. Um, but until then, go get tax free goods online by going to arithegreat.com. Hit the Amazon banner on the right, do all your shopping. I get 6%. Somebody just said he spent 200 bucks through my website on Amazon. And he goes, How many gummy bear bags does that buy you? Well, the honest answer is about five. About five of the big ones. Not the giant ones, but like the, you know, the, the good size Haribo ones. Um, so thank you. I will uh, clog my colon and have colorful shits because of you. Um, so yeah, just do all your shopping there. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it, they give me a bunch of percentage on it. Uh, it comes out of their end. So that's a way to support the show. Uh, I don't know if you heard last week, but I lost a fucking whole episode that I did with Mac Danzig. <sighs> and I spent like 200 bucks trying to recover it. Um, but I couldn't. But these are the kind of costs that I have from the show. That's what you get when you listen to a degenerate, um, not responsible comedian. Um, there's hidden costs that shouldn't be. I, I'm worse than the government, probably, in terms of spending like 600 bucks with toilet seats. I'm probably worse than that. But um, 
Another sponsor I have is Gamefly. If you guys do video games, honestly, even if you don't play video games, they have this deal where if you go to Gamefly.com slash Ari and sign up for a two-week free trial, they give me, they give me like 20 bucks. It's something really good. So, like, that's even... The Amazon is a good, consistent thing. This is like a one-time only thing. But Gamefly.com slash Ari. If you go to my website... Um, there's a there's a banner. I think the last banner is a GameFly banner. There's also Spotify, but I don't know what the deal is with that yet. Um, but but uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, GameFly. They gave me twenty bucks. So just go and then cancel your subscription in ten days if you don't like it. If you do like it, keep it. It's a great way to get fucking games like on a trial basis where you can just get them, use them, send them back. Hey little pigeon, how you doing out there? Pigeons are really cute. If you really look at them, if you take away the disease and the fucking the fact that they look like they have, nah, I take it back. They're gross. Um, so go to GameFly.com slash Ari and support the show. And that's it. Stand up. I'm in New York uh, for a few days doing spots. I did uh, Hannibal Burris' uh, Knitting Factory show in Brooklyn last night. Fucking packed full of hip, cool people. What a great show. If anybody lives in Brooklyn, every Sunday night. Head out there. It's fucking, um, it's an amazing fucking show. Great lineup. I think he has it all the time. Hannibal hosts. He's one of the best comics in the country. He hosts. It's a fucking great show. Uh, and then this weekend, I'll be at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey. With Kurt Metzger, will be opening, too, working on his uh, hour special for Comedy Central that he's taping in September. Um, okay, that's it. Um, oh, let me do one more date. I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm in uh, Vegas at the Empire Comedy Club, I think at Paris, I think at the Paris, Empire Comedy Club, August 16th, 17th, and 18th. Uh, the Stress Factory is 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, but this is 16th, 17th, and 18th at Empire Comedy Club. My next Storyteller show is August 21st at the Los Angeles Improv. It's going to be celebrity stories. I have not even thought of who to book yet. That's not true. I booked somebody, but I completely forgot. So if you're a comic and you're listening to this and it was you, please tell me. Um, and that's it. It all goes $5 and it goes to Planned Parenthood. It's 8 o'clock on Tuesday at the LA Improv, Tuesday, August 21st. It's 5 bucks. That's nothing for the fucking six shows I put on. Um, and I give it all to charity. I think we... All right, I'll talk about that later. But, uh, okay, thank you guys very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please subscribe. If you listen to this on iTunes or on Stitcher, please hit subscribe so that you get these every week. I appreciate you guys for listening. I seem like I'm an extrovert because once you get to know me and stuff, I'm an asshole and I'm loud. And, yeah. But if I'm in a situation where I don't know, I'm very... Yeah, this one says it's like if you, you can get into a really deep conversation with them, but talk about the weather and they have no... Oh, I can't, can't do... Like, small can't talk do drives me nuts. Yeah, I think that's why I have a hard time meeting new people like in, outside of comedy because I can't... Yeah, how do you talk to people when you meet them? It's just like, I don't know what to say to you. I get such anxiety over it, too. And then I see my little four-year-old daughter. She's amazing at small talk. Really? She just you. The I think the whole key is you state the obvious. Like you're wearing a necklace, and then they're off and <laughs> really? running, talking about their necklace. But she does it all. That she's really good at it. I like for to a just, while. I had to um, just have something to say when people are saying "How are you?" Because I'd always be like, "Good, how are you?" And they say "Good," and I'm like, "Oh, this isn't leading to any I know, conversation. I know. This is a dead end. What's new? <laughs> Nothing. What's new with you? Nothing." <laughs> So now it's like when they ask me, I have something I can use for like up to a year. Like I have my first enchilada. <laughs> yeah. Just basic things like that. So we're like, how are right. I? Like, good, I have my first enchilada. And they're like, and oh, then, you've never had one? And just something. Yeah, because that gets the conversation going. That's a good idea. I'm going to so always say now I had my first enchilada. Go for it. It's totally <laughs> genius. I don't care. I went to a football game. I used that for two years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, so, just anything. I don't right. care. Let's just start. Right. But you, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to just say anything. How like, do those people do it? Some people are just, they like that kind of safe talk. I like to go into. I guess. Yeah, I I'd rather immediately off, get into like, I would honestly, this sounds crazy, but I would immediately rather if I was like, how are you doing? If someone said, oh, you know, uh, my dad just got cancer. 
yeah. would be better with that. Way better, right? Just to go right into that than yeah. to be like, so it's hot. Yeah. I was at some meeting once at like some network, and somebody told me that they're about their child that had died, like a Sid's case. Oh my God. Yeah, and I was telling that to the agent who set it up the meeting. He was like, why would you talk about that? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, man. It came up. I, it, it was interested in it, easier. and we kept talking. Yeah. Big talk is easier for you. That small talk, yeah. Small talk. Fuck. All right. So now you're enjoying it because you've met people. Mm-hmm. And then you see who's here. And, and you're like, okay, I have some friends. I got to calm down. Yeah, and I had a show in the tent. How was that? It was funny because when they, they emailed me a couple of days ago, and they are like, hey, we want to add you to the show in the tent. And I didn't really think about it, and I wrote back. I Which, would love the tent, to. Right there on the square? Yes. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, I used all caps on that love. <laughs> and I really <laughs> shouldn't have. It seats about 20, 25 people maybe only. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like bleacher seating. It's really not... Is anybody there? They had a hard time getting people in. Are these people just walking by, stopping in yes, for five the minutes? Tr- kids, uh. I saw kids coming. I was like, no. If they, if kids get sad in there, I'm I'm out. I can't do it. Could you do this thing where if you're booked in a place and you see kids, you, can you go, oh, I'm not going to do this anymore? Yeah. Or do you feel like obligated to do it? Well, the, the, because you were the problem with kids is that the parent, I call them out because... Yeah. The thing is that the the parent is always like, oh, don't worry about my kid. My kid's fine. It's like, I'm not really worried about the kid. I'm worried about you're ruining every other the person whole in the show. show. Yeah, everyone's like, looking at that kid Now everybody's like time. feeling weird when you're talking about something that a kid shouldn't hear. They're like, oh, God. They're more concerned about that than about just sitting. It's an adult situation. I don't yeah. know why people don't like. Yeah, I get the kid. If it's especially if you're like 12, 13, yeah. I'm like, you've heard these words. That's cool. You watch yeah, cable. Yeah. But everyone's staring at you every time you make a dirty joke. <laughs> right. And I want yes. them to stare at me. Like, yes, it's important. Yes, exactly. It's important. And then if you talk to them, people think you're being a little mean to the kid. It's like, oh, well, yeah. I my whole thing is I have to just point out what's happening. That's what I do on stage. I do these, so. uh, yeah. I do these. The improv has um, those teen tours. Do you ever do those? Oh, God, no. I wouldn't. And it's like all 14 year olds oh. and a couple chaperones. But that. I just get filthy on that because it's all kids. That's hilarious. Yeah, I told them all. I was like, I'll do it, but I'm going to get extra dirty. <laughs> and they don't care? Yeah, they're like, okay, the kids love it. The chaperones right, sure are okay, the usually. Love it. Yeah. No one else would do it. I saw Ornie Adams do that once, and he goes, hey, I'm warming up for a Tonight Show. I'm not going to pander to you. Just listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jesus, man. He's hilarious. <laughs> Fuck, all right. He's I did a corporate gig with him. Really? About we had to do twenty minutes on yogurt. It was Dan and Oh, uh, that thing. Yeah, and um, afterwards there was a Q and A, and he spent the whole time telling them what they should do. Like they're <laughs> okay. an expert in their field, you know. But he's he was like completely like. And the thing was, he did well, so they probably would have loved him if he had just. Hadn't said anything. That yeah, was. exactly. Yeah. He said Sebastian. All Sebastian did was take his bits and add the word yogurt to it. Yeah, and there killed it. Yeah. Everybody else is trying to like, when I eat yogurt, I... Yeah. <laughs> Sebastian's like, I see these girls and sometimes they're eating yogurt, but they yeah. walk along. Right. Um, yeah, he said, he, Sebastian went like, here's how you do this. Mm-hmm. He's like a great corporate guy. He's got so much confidence. And he's so sort of clean, but not like right. intentionally clean. It's right. just like... You know, Regan clean, which just happens does to he, be. Does he have that kind of confidence off stage? Is he that person? I've never spoke. I've never really had hmm. a conversation with him. No, I don't think so. Because on stage, wit- it's like a character. Yeah. It's like overconfident, right? Yeah, I guess so. He, to me, he seems like the clean dice. Right. <laughs> like it's the same thing, noticing things, being perturbed by regular life, but just doing it in a nice way instead of a horrible way. Do you want to hear a funny dice story? Probably. Um. So... Um, Rich and I were at Jim Florentine's wedding. Uh-huh. You know Jim Did Florentine? he marry that black chick from Stern? <laughs> that's funny. Um, Wait, Robin. did he? No. Oh, okay. So that's Does dumb. that help people know him? I didn't even know until I was at his wedding that that's... That it happened? That he dated her. I couldn't believe he did that. For how long? When was like it? Like a while. But at least recently? A year, in the last... Seven years? No, re- I didn't know that. It's so weird. I don't it was know crazy. We were like, wait, what? Maybe it was fake. I don't know. No, I think it was real. Yeah. He seems like a real dude. I mean, he doesn't. Isn't Robin like a like a million? Yeah. No, I think <laughs> like... she's yeah, and she's a cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible for a sunset. I don't know anything about. It. Um, but uh, you're at Florentine's so, wedding. So Dice was there. So some the comics that were at our table were Jim Norton and uh, Artie Lang, me, Rich. And um, there's a couple other people there, and Dice. 
and the gentleman's table. The yeah, <laughs> and it was a little odd because Dice is he doesn't really have a great sense of humor. Like when you're just talking to him. Oh yeah, he doesn't really laugh at stuff, does he? He doesn't. I I think he doesn't know when jokes are being told. I'm not sure, <sighs> but that was the feeling I got. Anyway, so um. That was just a dig at him. That's not has no part of the story. I just realized I'm just <laughs> so um, um, so. At one point, we're waiting for the entrees, which Rich calls entries. Does he really? A lot. He's like I don't like to use this word anymore because I think it offends the wrong kind of people. But he's retarded, right? <laughs> he very much. <laughs> You know they say that you're you're trying to recreate your family when you marry someone. You're uh-huh. trying to find somebody. Uh-huh. And um, dad's a moron. <laughs> my uneducated. sister is mentally handicapped. Oh really? So I think I feel like a, a real bond with <laughs> oh, him over that. <laughs> I used to go on this O and I want to get back to the story. But I used to go on this O and A message boards for a while. Yeah. And uh, just look or just like say hi once in a while if I went on. And then Rich would always go in there and defend himself, which is like I the know, number one. He's, that's his way, but do this, not do that. that, that but I every know. other word is misspelled. And I'm like, I you're know. just <laughs> opening up your laptop just gives them more fodder. I know. this is a lo- He will not let anything go. I always say nothing rolls off his back, which is why he's great on radio because he always fights back. Like, oh, yeah. They, they, they bait him and he always goes <laughs> for it, right? But... um. You know, he he will go on message boards and uh, how do you spell douche? <laughs> no, it's like constant. Like I've got to spell all the words for him. You know, I'm like <laughs> don't write them back. <laughs> yeah. So you have to stay with dice. So they, you know, the the other people at the wedding decide they all want to take a picture with dice and the comedians, yeah. and so the group starts getting bigger and bigger. First, it's dice and somebody and the. Um, Wedding photographers there taking a picture, so it's like a little you know scrum of you know photographers, but they're just people with their um, cell phones, and they so all now every comedian that's at the wedding is standing with dice taking pictures, and everybody wants to take a picture with every single comedian and dice, and so they start. I'm talking to somebody, and Artie starts like Bonnie, get in the picture, and then Norton, come on. Um, so I go over to get in the picture, and dice. Well, he's in the middle of the comedians. He pushes through. He pushes through all. He walks through all the people that are taking the picture. And he goes, "I'm not taking a picture with a girl. Just what? the guys." <laughs> <laughs> like angrily, like really, like storms out of the the picture taking area. Two things. He could have left the other way, which would have been a little easier, a little Safe less like dramatic. I know what he's doing. You know? He's trying to be dramatic. What's the other thing? And the other thing was is that. Um, he could have just taken the picture. This is, I think what a normal person would have done. Yeah. Oh, like angry about it. Like, oh, I don't want girls in it. Take the picture and then be like, can you step out now? I just want a picture with just the guys. Dice does this thing where he just tries to fuck with people. He sees an opening in order to fuck Did with he, them. Was he though? I don't. Yeah, it's not. He has nothing to do with you. He seemed very serious about it. If there were a bunch of girls and a guy stepped in, he'd be like, no guys, just me. He'd oh, do the right, same thing. It's like, right. how can I fuck with you? Right. He would do this thing where he wouldn't take pictures for a while at the comedy store with fans. But then one time someone's like, Dice, can we get a picture? And he's like, sure, Ari, you take the picture. And he, he hands me their, their camera, but then he holds it in my hand and stares at me for like two full seconds and then drops away. And I was like, that was weird. <laughs> Why? Like, is he trying to tell you something? I think so. So I went and took the picture and then just like moved it slightly and like <laughs> cut him out of it. And then, and then handed it back to them. And they're like, oh, thank you. It was one of those wind-up cameras so you couldn't see. Right, right. And then I didn't know what to say, so I didn't say a word. And he goes, did you get me in it at all? And I was like, no. And he's like, okay, good. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. I read that right. <laughs> right. I had the same thing where I'd be like, oh, I don't know. I'm supposed but to I do tend, some, I, I do. I take fan photos like that all the time. What? Cut people out? Cut the Get them in front out. of the light so, oh. they can, so no one can see anything. So you can't do it with digital cameras anymore. Because they look right away. Yeah. Um... Let's talk about this thing. So anyway, then he, oh. so then I, you know, what? his wife came over to the table and she goes, so, she goes, did Dice ask you to leave the picture? <laughs> I go, well, he didn't, he didn't ask. <laughs> he demanded it and shoved through. <laughs> yeah. He did it in a much more juvenile way. And, um, uh, then she goes, oh, was Dice being a bad boy? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, hey, I don't really, I'm starting to see too much of what goes on inside your relationship. <laughs> I said, uh, I go, no, don't worry about it. I'm, I've contacted a blogger. But was, <laughs> That's but always a blogger. Joking. That's what you tell on. <laughs> tell to the bloggers. And then I tweeted, um, 
you know, something like Dice refuses to take picture with female co- uh, comedian, alert the media. Uh-huh. And I guess somehow he saw that tweet. He went on O and A, and I didn't hear it, but I guess he was like upset that I had tweeted that. Like I was really? trying to get him in trouble, but I was like, does he not know well, he the alert the-, the media is a joke is in yeah like that's that's pretty standard i hate when comics <laughs> don't know when another comic is doing something they think is ridiculous it's yeah. like then probably it's a joke right it's probably <laughs> so a joke a then comedian they try to get attention by doing things eleanor told me he did this thing at some airport once he saw these two like bull dyke lesbians and they're waiting for their bags everyone's waiting for their bags and he starts yelling at eleanor who he was going out with at the time yeah. he goes get the fucking bags i'm standing here like an asshole they're coming around the carrot. Go fucking do something. And she plays the game. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, Dice. I didn't know. He goes, you're a fucking dummy. Go do it. And then she like walks off. And the two lesbians are like looking at him like angry. And he goes, chicks, you dudes know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see that I have a whole new light on this right yeah. now because that's hilarious. Yeah. He just right? likes to fuck with people. So I, but I, I like that he likes to fuck with people. Like I, I didn't have. I mean, I think everyone at the wedding was like, yeah. this guy is a little weird. <laughs> like, because people kept coming over to me and being like, I didn't like the way he did that. You know, like now I'm a victim in some <laughs> situation. But. I love that. That's how much people defend. They wait until the situation's done yeah. and then say they don't I, stand for it. I'm on your side, by the way. Yeah. No, somebody <laughs> came with t-shirts, Team Bonnie. <laughs> um, Free Bonnie. But no, it didn't, it, you know, but it, it makes me feel better that it was... A joke, like a, you know, because yeah. he didn't say anything. To oh, yeah, he never me gives. After. That's, what I, that's what I mean when I was talking before. Right, like, like, you got to smile, smile before you walk away. A little wink. Yeah. Can you imagine when Dice starts winking at, at people? people. <laughs> really Get the fucking bags. <laughs> <laughs> wink. <laughs> I'm checking the eye. Yeah, look, I'm joking. Um, uh, so you're a chick in comedy. I am. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just talking to somebody yesterday about this. I don't know who. Some new comic. But she was like, yeah, it's nice. I get to go on because, you know, I'm like a cute girl. They put, put me on at open mics wherever I want. Annie much. Letterman. It wasn't her. Oh. <laughs> There's that? so many cute girls. When I started, it was a little bit still anomaly. You're one of the few. Anomaly. The cute girls found out you can fail out of acting and head yeah, straight to comedy boom. and be a And you don't even have to be that cute. Like, you can be a seven and, and be pretty high on Oh, the, seven's the above. Yeah, six is fine. Yeah. Six people will put you on. Right. An LA you can, have a, you can eat, totally have a pot gut. No one cares. Totally have a what? Pot P- gut. Pot gut. Yeah. You can have a little yeah. round tummy. No, but tight shirt, round tummy. Good yeah. to go. You're, um, still, you're still at the top of the... What have you found? Is it easier or harder? Like, especially in the beginning. Um, I, I di- Honestly, I feel like I didn't have any real differences. Where did you start? LA? I started briefly in Canada, then I, oh, yeah, New York idea. was really, you know, where I pretty much started. Then I came to this festival, the Montreal Comedy Festival. Yeah. Um, I saw your Canadian comedy special on, on Comedy oh, Central once. Yes, yeah, so that's very early. That was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. They played it on Comedy Central, right? Did they pick it up or HBO? Um, I feel like I saw it in America. It I think they did Canada. play one of them. I did two. Like within my first year or two of comedy, I did two half hour comedy specials really? for canada those comedy and now things. i can't even do a half hour like how they, does that happen really <laughs> i mean they I won't know. give you one no i mean uh literally i can't do the time <laughs> <laughs> that's not true is it no but it's uh, it, it is weird to think like what was i oh yeah what was, how did i get all those jokes in such a short amount of time um, you care more? Or are you just not willing to throw anything out you're like even if it's shitty i'll just do it i haven't watched those specials in a long time i imagine there's a lot of stuff you'd be cringy about yeah probably right yeah so then um i was always super showy try to like yell and make sure the crowd like gets it talk with a really high-pitched voice wow just something you don't seem like that guy no i've calmed down (laughs) yeah i didn't know how to get their attention right i told the owner of the comedy store i was like i have to get their attention she goes you're just getting your own attention (laughs) i was like you're an idiot and i threw a temper tantrum in the main room um, which got you a lot of attention. Yeah, there you go. See? So, yeah, let's talk about girls in comedy. Um, well, this is like an ongoing argument among comedians for like decades. Yeah, but you know, honestly, I feel like I, f- I felt like women took it too seriously. Like I always felt like when guys would go, "Women aren't funny," that they were kind of just busting our balls because I didn't mm-hmm. feel it myself. Honestly, you didn't feel them saying that about you. you mean? No, I and and in fact, when they did say it, I never put myself in that category. I never thought it was right. They're talking about other people. 
I don't know. That's some kind of weird ego I have. I know whatever. a lot of girls that have said, "Yeah, it's true. Women are. I'm different, but a lot of girls aren't." Right. Funny. Well, I just never. I just never cared about what they said because it didn't. Like, I didn't feel like I was being. I mean, when I got to uh, New York, I got in at all the clubs. Yeah. And then uh, when I moved to LA, I got in at all the clubs. Um, I could have went on the road a lot more. I found it a little bit more in writing, like with. Um, I had a meeting. What do you mean? Well, because when I was in L.A., I, I, um, I, I did a lot of writing jobs. Uh-huh. And I felt like that was more of a boys club. Writing? <clears throat> yeah, oh, really? because... I always thought that should be... Like they should have no idea who they're hiring if it's just off packets. Well, what they do is they get it in their heads that there's no funny women or women can't write comedy, right? And so when they're reading somebody's submission that's a girl... They're reading, they're reading it a little mind. bit harder than if oh. it was a guy. Like they might read your submission with a sort of a silly right. flair, um, but when they're reading girls, they might take it a little more seriously. They should read it without knowing who wrote it. Right. They really should. Right. Um, There's something to that. Like not being in the mood to laugh makes you not laugh. Right. <laughs> right. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah. Oh. And you're gonna find and out something and you're that's false. supposed to be just like a little throwaway. They're like, what is this? My first girlfriend was super mad at me after we broke up. She was like angry and like real short with everything and then she would like not laugh at my jokes and that was the thing I like most about her was just yeah. hearing her laugh and it was yeah. like I'd say a joke she's like oh yeah oh I'm my like, god oh fuck this hurts <laughs> it's so painful but yeah I'm sure they do that to you guys to some degree of just to a like degree, reading I think. And like, mm. but once you but then it's like anything once you're in you're in you know? right <clears throat> so um, but I did this is a bit of a humble brag story. Okay, yeah. I honestly I told this to Rich the other day because I remembered it, but then I was like, I can never tell that story because it paints me in a certain light. But um, <laughs> what happened? I'll try to. Th- what happened was is that I was uh, gonna write for the um, uh, the MTV Movie Awards. Okay. And I think the guy's name is Joel. What's his last name? Schumacher. No. Anyway, so. Okay. He does the roasts and stuff now, the executive. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, okay. Joel Gallen. Okay. Okay. So um, I'd written my submission. Uh, my friend and I bo- worked on it together. She was a comedian too, Stephanie Wilder. And um, he really liked it, and he was very positive about it. And we came in and had an interview with him. And yeah. right away, this is where the humble brag part starts. He was like, "Oh no, no, no! I, I can't, I can't hire you guys. You guys are too pretty. There's no way. There's no way anybody would get any work done around here." Really? I mean, keep in mind, this is a long time ago. <laughs> You're really pretty. <laughs> but I was like, um, and he really felt like he was giving a compliment, like yeah. he was being nice to us. But he was like, "Yeah, no." But he was seriously like, "I can't hire because nobody's going to do hire anything." Us. No, he wouldn't hire us. We were like, uh, I remember when I was little, there was some story on the on the radio about some construction worker girl who got fired. Because she was too pretty and people weren't working. And they were like falling off the scaffolding. Yeah, yeah no one was dying. That's like hilarious. People were getting hurt. People were hitting themselves in the head with <laughs> shit. Because she was just too hot. Which I was like, F- I, it's, not, it's not right to fire somebody for being attractive. But, but I get it. I get like, it. Yeah. You're ruining the job. Like, unless we hire all hot chicks, then I could. The could thing was, we weren't like, we didn't have makeup on. It's not like we went in there with like, you know, our heat. Wouldn't they, the our- thing is, wouldn't people be more likely to like try to write better jokes to impress the pretty women? Well, this happened too one time I was working on this job and the, the head writer got... I was the only girl um, yeah. for two years on that job. And um, the head writer got... Or the the showrunner guy got drunk. At, you know, we'd go out drinking after and um, got really drunk and I heard him going to all the guys. He goes, the girl is the best writer we have, you guys. Like, he was so <laughs> disgusted with them. He was giving them like... <laughs> Like, this, we've gone too this bad. Is, is this where we're at? Okay. <laughs> but I remember being so, like, filled with Happy about pride, it. like, You're hearing like, that. Right. It was like... <laughs> he clearly doesn't want to give me that compliment, but he's doing it. So oh, nice. it was, like, so maddening. It was trying to get them to do better. <laughs> this is our... Oh. I always thought, too, with girls in comedy, when, like, girls aren't funny, and this is, it's this big argument, but, but I wondered, like, how much girls actually rate themselves as a female comic. Right. I mean, that's the thing is like, I, I, I feel like some, I just think women Instead in general, uh, sometimes yeah. they, they, they genderize things. Is that even a word? But they yeah, put things sure. into gender groups too much. Like, like the, the Daniel Tosh thing when he, you know, said, wouldn't it be funny if somebody came in and raped you right now? To me, that didn't have anything to do with her gender. 
That just had to do with a guy You're dealing with a heckler. Up. And I feel like if a guy was there and said it, he would have said that same thing or something equally offensive to him. Yeah, that sort of makes sense to me. And it like, just what if they like, would have said that to a yeah. guy? It would be fine. It would be fine. Nobody would care. Yeah, no one care. Even if, if the guy blogged about it. They don't want double standards, but they do. It's like, you know, or like, um, you know, at, at some point that you got- in comedy, you as a, 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 a dude, you have to kind of prove yourself. You have to go on where they put you on. You have to uh-huh. take shitty spots. You have to go on late. And I feel like sometimes, you know, like women, I hear them all the time. Like, oh, I always have to go on first. It's so maddening. And it is maddening, but it's maddening for everybody. What do you mean? Why? Oh, whoever has to, to go on whoever first. Whoever has to go on first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you don't get the good spot, but then it's like... Yeah, but they say, oh, it's because of girls. I put, put early, and it's like, no, maybe it's because you're new. Right, like, right. look at the rest I of the lineup. I think sometimes girls don't realize that, like, no, like, you, you see these amazing comics like Todd Berry and, um, and uh, David Tell and stuff in New York, you know... I remember when I first got to New York, they were the shit then. Oh, like, right. They've been the shit for a long fucking time. They go to the clubs every fucking night. Yeah, and why would like, you think you'd be... Yeah, why do you think that you should get a better spot than that guy? I mean... The girls always said that about the comedy store. You didn't spend much time there, did you? And hardly ever. I never got past, really. Yeah. I did some shows there, but I think they were special. Belly rooms or main room stuff, whatever. The... Yeah, but girls would always say they hate girls at the comedy store. That's in the yeah. LA scene. That's what always... But I was like, are you sure it's not just they hate everyone? Right, and you're so used to being welcomed with like open arms that when you're not, that right. it's like, oh, they must hate women. Well, there's also like this thing that happens is that you get, um, you get told when you start, especially if you're a pretty girl, that yeah. things are going to be really easy for you. Well, didn't you, you get know? up a lot more because of that? I don't know why I got up. I didn't yeah, question nothing it. To but everybody's it using to. everybody's using whatever tool that they have at their disposal. Oh yeah, so, I don't have a problem with girls using that. Right. I was so, like, get it. You have a friend. Your I father's an actor. Like, go for it. I didn't try to change who I was in order to, you know, I didn't like, you know, Pretty put on, yeah, put on a guys. skirt and, I mean, I flirt with guys because that's, like, that's part of my personality. Yeah. Though. Like, is to, I don't know if you call it flirting or just being like. There's a thing that girls do. You touch I an like, arm a little too much. Yeah, I touch a little do you, bit. Would you do One that time with I was like, doing it to a guy at the wedding right in front of Rich and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, <laughs> I'm just patting the back of his neck. Is that inappropriate? <laughs> You're but, trying to get that guy interested in you in some way. Not like that, like fully, but just right. like, I want him to be right. into this as a person. Right. No, I definitely, and I have a skill in doing I'm sure, it, right? You so. must have learned it over time. I know. And it's, as I get older, I realize I've relied on it way more it's than I like to think. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. now sometimes I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I know I'm guys, an old like, lady doing this. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> You're not an old lady. How old are you now? I don't. All right. Sorry. On, sorry. I asked Barry that? Sobel that once. Oh, God. When I started, I was working the cover booth at the store. You really think he's going to go 55? <laughs> no, but I didn't know. He looked young back then. <laughs> oh, this was. And, uh, and then I saw a picture of him upstairs in the offices with like Jimmy Walker, like back then, and all these like old, old people. I was like, dude, how old are you? I saw this picture upstairs. He goes, you don't ask someone that. It's ridiculous. You don't ask a person that question. And I was like, what? <laughs> I thought you were allowed I'm to ask I'm from Maryland. Guys. What do you mean? <laughs> I, mean I, I want to be able to just say my age and not be weirded out. Why are you, why are you weirded about out? Because I feel shame. I don't know why. You're just... My grandmother always said that she wouldn't tell people her weight because she had control over that. Her age was out of her hands. So fuck it. Here's, oh. how, here's when I was born. I'm 38. Well, I know what you mean. At some point, you're going to feel people think of you as old. Mm-hmm. It's weird as like a com- being a comedian. I've always felt like it was it was fine for when I'm young, but now I'm getting older. I feel like oh really? I'm like this is what I do for a living. It's like, a young person's thing, going on the road, doing all that stuff. Yeah, it's a 27 year old kind of game. Right, and then but the th- but the weird thing about comedy is that you're never really that good at 27. Right, like when it's your time, it's not even your time because you have to wait until you're, you're 40 not good before enough to you're develop fucking, your technique. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like if you don't get a name before that, then you're fucked. I see all those people like that are hitting forty and they're just good comics, but right. like the, well, right. you're going to be irrelevant in three years to a I comic know. club. <laughs> it's irrelevant. Horrible. And the thing is, like, is that Hackett, you see the young people coming up and they know. They know. They like, know they're bypassing you. You're a wounded antelope. Yes. You're the fucking old lion. Yes, and they're like, you know, they stop to say hello as a treat to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Has anybody ever done that? Anybody like, demeaned you with like? Hey, you know, when I started, you were actually one of somebody I looked up to. <laughs> no, I don't even think anybody knows who I am. It's like so annoying. I could start over now. And just what? Just be like a, under a new alias new name? or something. Like, oh. You don't go to clubs much, huh? 
Well, I mean, I had a child, so I really I took a backseat to it. I made the movie instead. Yeah. Um, women aren't funny. So yeah. what's that movie about? So the movie is I went up to find out if women are funny or not, sort of put this whole debate to bed. Yeah. And the re- one of the reasons I did it was because I wanted to make a movie, and that's a topic that everybody always we talks always talk about, about it all the time. So I felt like you know you could get people to you, you know. And it's in my world, so I could get people that I knew to do it. But I always sort of felt like it was a joke. And then somewhere during the making of the movie, I was like, these people really don't think women are funny. Yeah, I have a problem with women. You really do? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Let's hear it. But one, I just sort of, there's a part of me just hates all of you. Right. Because I I don't know, you know, over the years, whatever. But um, yeah, I see a lot of women that, especially prettier women that since I've started, that are like, oh, they're just bad. Right. And they're being put on these things, and it's just annoying. Just sort of cutesy. Every time you see like a variety, tend to watch. Oh, those I are know. two girls that I are on know. there. They're like they're objectively like... terrible. Right. But but they're not. It's not doing anybody any favors because it's not helping the the cause of of what funny women. Oh no, it's not. It's right. hurting the cause of funny women. Well, like when you see new faces, what you'll see is a guy who's been doing it ten, twelve years, mm-hmm. and then a girl who's been doing it two and a half months. Yeah. Well, that's where this stuff comes from. And then from. it's like, people are like, well, girls just aren't as good as guys. Well, he's, they've, somehow the industry has allowed oh. him to. So you're to, comparing people that are well into it with people that are like, yeah. because of women. You, know, you being got Joe like, List, let's say, yeah. who's a very funny comedian. He's been doing it, I don't know, let's say 10 years. Okay. I, I have no idea. I don't know. But, yeah. You know, and then other people who've been doing it like girls have been doing it like three years. Yeah. You know, I know. I, I remember being here one year, and there was a girl that had never done a real show. She'd only really, been, yes. God damn it! <laughs> She's being invited to the Montreal Comedy <laughs> Festival, the most important festival yeah. in North America. Yeah, fuck. She was hella cute, but um, that helps. Yeah, but then people are like, "Well, um, hmm. I just saw that girl Jamie Lee. Do you know her? I don't know her. She's a New York comic, I guess. Probably the alt scene, but I don't know. And then I was, we saw her and Emily Heller. And we're walking away, and I was like, "That girl, Jamie Lee, is really cute." And people were like, "Yeah, she actually just lost weight, or she just got better looking." I was like, "Wow, oh, and she got new faces the same year." Yes, Weird. <laughs> right? Weird. <laughs> I don't... Right. So they're judging, you know, they're yeah. judging a different. But I'm like, yeah, that's what you got to go for, I guess. But then, if you looked ugly, do you, do you think ugly girls have it harder? Because people, like, well, I think it. There, there's there's it's always like a trade off mm-hmm. for everything. Being a girl has its trade off. Obviously, you can get things easier, but you you know maybe people will not think you're as funny, yeah. but. You know, being an ugly girl, you probably get taken more seriously, but you might not get as much. Because they're not going to like... Because they like to put people pretty lineups. people on television. I remember I used to go out with this comic, this pretty comic, and she was, uh, we were driving, she maybe started like a year before me. We were driving by the comedy store, the open mic, when they all like stand outside, waiting. She's like, why are those people waiting out there? And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> right. I waited out there for years. Right. You never know right. what it's like to wait for an open mic. Right. You motherfucker. Well, I got a development deal at this festival the first year that I did this festival. Yeah. And um, I hadn't been doing comedy very long, two years or two and a half years or something. And um, I, I I bombed my first two jokes, but I'd been so used to bombing. I mean, I they literally, that I didn't care. I was just like, oh, you know, New York is hard. It's a hard yeah. fucking. And, um, and then by the end of the, the show, I'd, you know, I'd gotten the, the audience. But um, um, so anyway, I got, you know, a lot of people were, you know, trying to talk to me in meetings, get a deal, whatever. And I ended Isn't up getting a deal. Break? No, no, no. I didn't know that that wasn't happening for everybody else. Oh, really? At the festival. Like, I didn't realize, like, oh, I'm I'm having a, a good experience. This is, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's weird because you don't know. You know, it's just like, you know, when you're, you just think, oh, everybody. This is the way things for are. everybody. Uh-huh. Well, this isn't as hard as people make it out to be. When I got to college, I was like, I met other people with, like, divorced parents who I didn't really know any of those people growing up and, like, not upper middle class and, like, lower class people. And they're like, oh, <laughs> you have to get a job? Ew, <laughs> what? That rich people, they, the, the, it's so funny because rich people have no clue. Like, they'll be like, you'll be like, oh, I'm broke. And they're like, well, just go get some lunch or something and, you know, relax. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you're like, no, but I'm, I don't have any money. Well, just, I don't know, go get a massage. You'll feel better. <laughs> yeah. No, but. No, no money. I don't yeah, have any money. Yeah, like they can't understand it. <laughs> There's this, well, what, then why are less women in comedy? Because there are less women in comedy, right? Well, there are less women in comedy. It's, um, it's not something. I think it's. A, I think that it's 
a more natural thing for a guy to do. To go into. Still, mm-hmm. I mean, it's obviously it's changing, but you know, it's just, it's first of all, you have to be by yourself a lot. Yeah. You know, and women tend to travel in packs. Yeah. You can't just be going to club after club. You know, even if you're in New York, yeah, you have to go to all those clubs by yourself. Yeah, like a, wait in the a back. A few people are willing to do it, girl wise, mm-hmm. but it's like it's it's almost it's like ninety percent guys that are doing that. Yes, it's and you're late at night. I mean, there's uh-huh. like, you know, you got you're waiting for your one thirty spot at the cellar. You know, so that's girls are less. Girls are less likely to enjoy that lifestyle, right? Probably, and then if you go on the road, that's it's a bizarre life. I mean, first of all. It's hard to make money as an opening act. Oh, yeah. You know, so you're living a poverty-stricken lifestyle and traveling by yourself. And every comic will try to fuck you. Every comic is, yeah. It doesn't matter like what size like or shape or 10. what you look like. They're all, yeah. They'll at least put something out there, and ho- like just a feeler. But then you're lonely, so you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you fucked a lot of the openers? Like Not the openers, like headliners when you were like opening or middling? Um, you know, I didn't go on the road very much because I ended up lot. writing instead. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to ever hang out with anybody other than comics. Yeah. It's, so I fun. ended up having a lot of, when I say a lot, I don't, I mean like in the hundreds. Um, <laughs> I don't, not just not get crazy, but I, um, yeah, I dated comics pretty much exclusively. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And you never said like that's it, no more comics. I'm not dating any more comics. No, I don't even understand when I people say it shit. now. When girls go, I would never date a comic. I'm like, what? Who are you going to listen to a guy talk about his dentistry practice? Yeah. I mean, you know, you have to listen to the other person sometimes. They're way more fun to be around. First of all, comics. Yeah, they. they <laughs> even when Rich and I are having like a fucking huge meltdown blowout fight yeah. um, we can get the other person to laugh in the middle of it if we say really? something funny yeah I mean we'll get mad about it we'll like can you stop being funny this is serious but because <laughs> you can't help it but you, you just do you say things and then later you're like remember you said that you gotta do that that's funny you know yeah but we, we, like what's all we do is talk about comedy um, why would you ever want to talk about anything else besides comedy yeah yeah I, I tried finding sometimes I see I see people and I'm like are we talking about this too much is this boring anybody <laughs> it's all I want to bother with it's all I want to do yeah that's why you have to marry you have to marry I'm dating this chick now a little bit uh-huh. and um and she listens to like she's a big podcast listener uh-huh. so she always wants to talk about the podcast she hears or the comedians podcast right. she hears, hears and she goes you don't want to talk about this I was like no no I do yes. <laughs> tell me what's on it and I totally want to talk about exactly this right like you're not boring me at all <laughs> I know <laughs> It's funny. We're like, if you're flipping through TV and like, stand up comes on. Stand up, you gotta watch it. It doesn't matter. If you, yeah. If you like, flip by Letterman and they're about like, this next comic is, yeah, you have you to gotta, stop and yeah, watch, right? Is, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be four minutes. I'm definitely gonna watch this guy's set. And half the time you're like, oh my God, what is this guy doing on there? Oh <laughs> yeah. man. There is that. Did oh, I, tell you okay. I wanna see this, this thing now. Oh, that, oh, that does look like me. <laughs> Amir. Who's Amir? <laughs> that does look like me. Wow. Um, so that's why girls don't go into it because they're just it's not their lifestyle it's not a great lifestyle and I think um, you have to be really smart to be a comic even though it doesn't seem like it what does like that have it. to do with women well I think women who are smart tend yeah. to get funneled into other they get professions. better jobs the they people want them to be if you're a, a smart woman people want you to be an engineer they like actively pursue you to do other professions do you ever see that 60 minutes thing on pretty people trying to get jobs with the exact same qualifications as non-pretty people no what happened they get the jobs they do. Yeah, and people with less qualified like resumes that are prettier also get the jobs. Wow. It's like it doesn't matter what it is, they get the jobs. Wow. It was like garbage men, it was like intelligence related jobs, it but was like all don't sorts. Be a, don't be too hot, right? There's a tipping point. Yeah, I guess so. It's too, if you come in like cleavage or like big boobs yeah. like Coco. Um yeah, it'd probably be hard. Yeah. So there's that, and there's also women a lot of women, they relationship out of comedy. You know, once yes. they match up with somebody, they're like, oh, I'm yes. done with this thing because right. I can get the, maybe it's because they need attention a certain way and they get it. Well, I think too, there's like, I mean, I see this with guys or certain guys that just like being on stage, uh-huh. you know, they're wacky and they're crazy. And to be, um, I think, you know, to be a really good comic, you have to be able to have the discipline to write a joke and also the willingness to like perform it uh-huh. right? and to wait four hours to go on stage for 10 minutes yeah yeah you have to really love it it's yeah. like a, you have to be a nerd about it and um i think yeah. for some women that need for attention 
I think there's more women that go into the profession that fall into that category where they just have, they just want to be wacky on stage. Right, right, right. Instead of taking the, the time to, to, actually, to, to actually loving the, the art of crafting a joke. Yeah. My friend, Dave, you know David Taylor? You remember him? Yeah. Uh, he said, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Did you, did you used to fight with him? Yeah, he's a meanie. <laughs> yeah. I've had to defend that guy so many times. I don't remember now what he said to me, but he said something that was very um, upsetting to me. He, it was it some before. roast? Oh, I know. He was very no, no. I was I got Letterman, and I went into That's this club is. to do. A, somebody said you could go in and run your Letterman. Said I was doing Letterman like the next night or two yeah, nights. Later. He's such an asshole sometimes. Yeah, go ahead. And he okay. So I went up to him and I was like, "Hey, I think he was running the show. I might be remembering this wrong." And um, I said, um, "I I was told I could come run a set here." And he was like, "You were, what?" I go, "Well, I'm doing Letterman tomorrow." And they said I could come run a set. And he goes. Okay, fine. Go ahead. I go, what? It, the show hadn't even started. People were still sitting. He just walked onto the stage and he goes, she's doing Letterman tomorrow, everybody. Uh, <laughs> and then I went up and I did my set. It was hor- It was embarrassing. I, I didn't even know. I was like, why Where didn't I just Miyagi's, walk out? Miyagi's? And then afterwards, he went back on to start the show, get the lights right. <laughs> you know, really? I mean, it was like, and then he goes, uh, I remember as I was leaving, he was saying like, you know something that I obviously fuck somebody. That yeah, that was Letterman it. to get that. Sense. Yeah, he said he made some joke. He was so proud of it the next day. <laughs> some joke about how some like you sleep to the top of like two different things. I don't know what yeah, comparison. Some, he made. I, yeah, it was something. But it was like, what did I ever do to you? That's, I mean, that's what happens. I think when all these guys are starting comedy, there's this like weird competitive thing. But I'd already been doing it a hundred years longer than him. I d- totally deserved that Letterman. There's nothing that set was fucking. When people great. start, they think there must be a reason why I'm not doing but well. But you've probably and these been doing are. comedy a year. Probably at that two point. years tops. Yeah, but it's still like I know I'm funny. So what's going on here? And then never the thought comes like. You're not as funny as you will be five years from now. Right. Like, don't. Or even the fact that, like, you know, being God, funny prick, is everybody. not necessarily the number one reason people get chosen oh, yeah. for uh, a set. Like, you know, people who do well on television are joke writers. Oh, yeah, definitely. The Hedberg types. Yeah. That's so much they, easier to, to cut things and to, like. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, comics who are, like, you know, demonstrative and, like, you know, high energy do so much better on the road, but that's because you're dealing with drunk, yokels. drunken people. It's like you have to get that attention. But when you're on TV, it's like all right there. So you want to be yeah, smaller. Up your face. Yeah, yeah. You know, you want to. You you. It's like they're already just staring at a TV. You don't have to get their attention, so you can just tell whatever joke that you want to tell. Yeah. How much of that do you think chicks have to deal with? What angry male comedians? But it doesn't everybody for have to. I mean, that's like it, that's. That's an example people, of where, yes, my gender played a role in that story, but I'm sure every yeah, guy you know has what? its own story of some... Chris D'Elia types get that also. Like who? pretty men. Oh. Um, I don't know who you know. You know oh, pretty I know guys. Who he is. Yeah, that guy from yeah. New York uh, who used to run Caroline's a bunch. Yes. Uh, Colin Kane. Yeah. Yeah. Like those are pretty people. Right. And when they get stuff, everyone's like, oh, well, yeah. there it is. <laughs> that explains Julian, why I'm not getting right? it. Julian McCullough. Yeah. Yeah. People are like, oh, right. Yeah, and that must that must be for everybody pretty. Right. Because people don't want to accept. <laughs> That's like, how can this not be happening to me? Right. But, but I don't, I feel like now I've put myself in some category. I'm not. What, I mean, pretty person? No. I mean, oh, I'm just you know where you are. A normal. You know your ranking. What would you say, what would you say your number is? I'm not going to tell you either way. Um, in comedy, I probably rate pretty high. But in real life. Yeah. Um, how about I'm, 13 years ago? <laughs> At like the prime of your prime, where did you um, think your number was? Yeah, probably even worse than now because I really did nothing. I really just wore a backward baseball cap all the time. Really? So I remember you being really pretty. Really? Mm-hmm. It's so weird. I mean, I don't mean to be like. Really? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> See, I couldn't quite hear you on that last one. Um, but yeah, no, I've never really thought of myself like that. Really? Yeah, well, like I've a little bit lesbiany looking. And- you don't try to do it up. You don't try to like. I do yourself. more now because I'm fighting with wrinkled lines and serious shit like that. age issues. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, it sucks. Every time I find a gray hair, I'm like, fuck, do I fight this or do I just accept it? I guess I don't care. See, this is why this, I, I, I try a lot harder now to be good and not get in trouble, uh, you know, police wise. Because if I go to prison, oh. you'll see 
like for three months in prison, I'll have almost Beaten all gray. Oh. oh, really? You diet? Right. So, you should diet. You definitely should. Can you imagine? Just, like those women that just let themselves. Whoa, was there a fright? What happened in prison? You're like, no, I just didn't have access didn't, to L'Oreal. <laughs> Instead of that phone call, do you think I could get? Um, but uh, So this is what David said. He said that women in the beginning are, are way more used to, they're better right away because they're more used to people looking at them. They're used to having all eyes on them, right? Um, and but they're not. Are, but it is a, it's a weird thing because I don't think they're used to all eyes on them in a laughing, in that kind of environment. Like, oh yeah, that part's different. But just yeah. the idea of like they're all looking at me and putting like I don't know. I had a problem where I was like this is fucking strange and I'm not comfortable. And, really? Oh yeah. I yeah, you probably I, are an introvert. I, I think huh? I really wor- had to work. That was the hardest thing I had to work at. Like I loved writing the jokes and like. I mean, I get probably as good a feeling writing the joke as I do performing it. So that was always my number one thing. But then, I, I mean, I was like horrible. I was terrible at, I still am not that great at selling my own material. Really? Yeah. Huh. It's not my best. It's not my best thing. Because I get, I get very self-conscious. Why on stage? Yeah. About what? How you look and stuff? No, just that people are looking at me. I mean, I have like oh. social anxiety. So that- Maybe it is an introvert thing. Do you really have social anxiety? Like take, take pills for it? No, 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 no. How Just um, I medicate with drugs and alcohol. Oh, really? That helps. <laughs> Do you... Um, wait, okay. How come you don't ever take pills? I don't know. I'm just never... Even sometimes if I have a headache, I will forget that I'm allowed to take... Allowed to take aspirin? Yeah. Really? Why? That help, pills help so much for everything. I know. I will, I'll complain about it for like hours and Rich will be like, did you take a fucking aspirin? And you're like, no. I don't know. I didn't. Um, so what did you learn in the movie then about like girls not so funny? So like- what we found out is that um, women are not funny. Mm. Did you? No. <laughs> so, like, you really overall, think that could I don't be know. Impossible. They're what? <laughs> well, I never really took the whole thing seriously. I was making more fun of the fact, the actual argument yeah. because what happens is, is that you know there's you can't say like even when they were like oh finally women have shown that they can be funny like bridesmaids or tina fey or mm-hmm. whatever it's it's dismissive of all the women that were around before like that were funny yeah you know? a lot of it's too it's, i think it's studios and networks where they're just like we need to find some pretty woman who can do a couple jokes and, throw <laughs> yes. on. and it's like how about follow the roseanne model and find right. someone who actually right. can make good jokes and knows right. how to sell stuff and then people will watch don't right. worry yeah, they always turn to actors for fucking comedy. I know. And I'm like, we do this nonstop. I know. I know. It is weird. And a lot of times on a show, they'll put a, like, they'll use a guy comedian. Yeah. And then. Guy comedians are allowed to be fat. Oh, you girl can Girl comedians be. are really not on TV. Right. right. So it's then you much- get the ones that are just. So the girl comedians that are levels. funny um, are not allowed on. Did you wave to yourself was- in the reflection? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The girl comedians that are funny are not allowed on American television. So you don't get to see them. Yeah. I mean, some of them are too hideous. They're just gross. They're just gross. Like, who, like, like whom? All the, but they get on the fat black um, chick. Yeah. Oh, well, fat subset. and black can go together. Yeah. You can be that. Yeah. Yeah. Fat white chicks, I guess, don't really get on. The no. Moniques and the Lonnie Loves of the world and the, all those girls. Right. Like the angry fat, whatever. Right. I hate me some skinny bitches. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that gets on TV. But Jessica Kirsten, that does not right, get on TV. Right. Right. People like beat it. Oh, oh. Um. So the but the pro, the thing is, when people say women aren't funny, I think it's just, they're not really ever saying like no women has ever been funny. Right. They're just saying in general, like here's what more I'm met men with. are able. Well, the, women don't do themselves any favors. They're strident a lot of times. They mean? take up these causes. I mean, I don't know how. What like when. Do you need to rule the whole world and then, then you're going to uh-huh. be like satisfied? Like, do men have to be like puddles on the ground bef- <laughs> as you march through them before you're like, okay, uh, right. we're equal? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like enough already. Like, it, it drives me kind of nuts because it's like, well, there's doctors and lawyers, and I mean, there's all c- kinds of strippers now doing you know, <laughs> those. No, um, but there, there's women in every single profession. It's like, yeah, you know, and they still fucking get mad. It's still not enough yeah. for them, and it drives. My problem with girls—they're always playing the defenseless card. That's like a thing that I don't, I don't. It's like if 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 they get into an argument with someone, they want a man to defend them a lot, right? And I'm like, it's a verbal conflict. 
You yeah. should be even with me on this. <laughs> right. Like you don't need anyone backing you up. Right, right. But if there's an right. argument at a party, boy, girl, there's a million boys that back up that this girl. Is, this is the whole problem is that there's like it's – there's too many twists in it. Like mm-hmm. feminists have somehow made um, a guy buying dinner on a date yeah. like a thing that that's – if he doesn't do it, he's a fucking asshole. Yeah, but what do you and mean? Then, What's, but aren't we but, there? but yet you want to get paid the same amount at work. The reason you don't get paid the same amount at work is because <laughs> men – the reason men got paid more was because they – took care of the financial load now you still want men to take care of the financial load but you want to be paid equal amounts i mean it's like it's there's too many twists on everything it's like you know it's like that woman like you know with the daniel tosh thing and and you know so you didn't you didn't get offended by that at all or i I will always side with the comedian not the heckler you don't what I would like to ask that lady what she thought was going to happen when she yelled out during his set in which, you know, he is a highly paid comedian. She knew who he was. She had to have known who he was. He was on a comedy stage. Okay. So I don't think you should be thinking your life is at risk while you're listening to this person. It's like a movie at this point or whatever. And then when she yells out, you know, no rape jokes are funny. Did she... I would like to know what she really thought was going to happen. She Did she think apologize. he was going to like bend down and have an intellectual discourse with her on what's appropriate or not appropriate during a comedy yeah. set? Um, did she I've think- never seen one of those bloggers. And any time they write about this comedian's wrong, Dane Cook, Toss, yeah, whatever yeah. it is, they've never said, I shouldn't have yelled out. But I, I know. They, it's like they don't, they don't take it. Wrong. Your behavior, you started with the offensive behavior. Yeah. That's how it started. You interrupted a performance. I yeah. mean, who could possibly think that was okay? The way she wrote, though, was like, and the way he said five people should come rape me. I had to get out of there before I know. She really like, thought that five people were going to rape her because that's what happens at comedy clubs. People rape. People just rape. And everyone's yeah. just watching. Do girls have to live with that at all? The idea like, well, maybe something will break out. I just, let me get out of here. Well, I'm yeah, defenseless. no, I mean, it is a freaky, scary thing. You think about it all the time. You think like, you know, oh my God, is this where I get raped? Like if you get off the subway late at night. Oh, yes. You're you always thinking about that it. that guy behind you was going yes, to. Yes, yeah, you're okay. always just thinking about it. Okay. But... That doesn't mean that that's a more important fear than murder. Yes, or 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 that like okay, let's say a guy is in war, mm-hmm. and um, you know he watches his buddy get killed. I mean, or whatever, and he comes back and he's in a comedy show, and somebody's like making jokes about war. Does that guy then have yeah. the right to stand up and be like, no, because this is a real fucking thing in my life? It's like, yeah, we get yes, that. These are you. real things in people's lives, and then we make jokes about them. I remember someone making a 9 11 joke like a year or two later. Yeah. And some guy's like, my brother was in 9 11, died 9 11. And then he was just like, oh, well, then I guess that's why it's not funny for you, huh? Right. It's like, shut the fuck up. Who cares? I mean, you kind of have like an emotional thing. Like you get why somebody would be upset or if, How much if, is, what happened to walking out quietly? What happened to suffering in silence? You don't yell in a movie. No. I don't get it. You, if, if, if Daniel Tosh was on a movie screen, they would have just walked out. Yeah. But. And what I hate it too is that all the people like picking up that blogger, like all the people writing about it afterwards, they were all like, well, if you're skilled like Louis C.K., you can do it. But this someone less skilled thing. like this Daniel Tosh, like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? They keep going. It wasn't funny. Okay, that should never come into the argument. That should never come into the argument. No, first of all, all first of all, Daniel Tosh is a really funny comedian. He's a really funny comedian. So, like, what are you? Ta- everyone laughed at that joke. Right. Everyone laughed and it except the one funny girl. To me, yeah. When I heard it, I was like, if I was there, I can understand how it, it was going down. But the thing is, is like, I, it's like, even if you didn't think it was funny, it doesn't matter because a comedian shouldn't be held to a standard of one hundred percent. Yeah. I heard Patrice say that on on like Fox or something like that. He goes, all those jokes, the offensive ones and non-offensive ones, they all the good ones and the bad ones, they're all from the same spot. Right. Where it's like, is this funny? Yes. And then the crowd laughs like, yes, it is. Or they don't. And you're like, no, it's not. Right. And do people think like... And it's about lollipops. You don't have to take any danger if, if you don't get... It's people just like, oh, that wasn't funny. Yeah. But no one gets mad at you. Right, right, Making an anti-lollipop right, right, joke. Right. I know. And it's but the thing is, is like that person is so self-centered. She doesn't mm-hmm. understand that the 18 other topics that he dealt with before he got to that one could have had the exact same impact on somebody else in the audience. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, it's a self-absorbed. It's self- a very self-absorbed thing to be like, no, this is the most important because this one's hitting me. No, I laughed at the retard thing. 
All right. Right. But then somebody else who has a, a, a son who's mentally handicapped probably wasn't laughing. Yeah, I would, lo- at that I would joke. love to play that set back. A Daniel Tosh set, by the way. And yeah. He always does offensive jokes. Right. To play so, that back for that right. lady and, and be like, and you didn't get mad her here, in the here, audience here, here. Like this. <laughs> On every single other effect. Oh, but wait, you got to something that hits me now. Yeah. I have to take it up because I'm the most important person in this audience. It's narcissistic. But also the whole thing about being funny is such... Uh, it's... it's, it's it, th- those jokes... I don't know if people think you just... You write them at home and you go, this... You know what? This one's going to totally work, oh, yeah. or this one's not. You know in advance. It's a Wednesday at the Laugh Factory. You just, just you have to try shit. shit out. I mean, if you ever watch Chris Rock, it's a really oh, yeah. fascinating process because he takes a yellow pad on stage yeah, when he's he really first starting. Works out. He works out his jokes, and you can. Some of it's good, some of it's not, and then you see him like six weeks later somewhere, and some of those bits are bigger and uh-huh. slightly tighter. different, and you know it's. It's a job, and you can't do it at home by yourself. It's like you have to. It's not like learning to play the clarinet. Yeah, you when you're have doing like a two thousand seater and people. you're taping something, you're like, "These are the jokes you should quote me on." Yeah, you know, right? But until then, it's like, right? I'm, I'm just, just working this around. stuff out. You you get to see the drafts. Yeah, or I'm trying in a different order, and people are like it right. didn't work. I'm like, no, I didn't. But I had to see right. if it did or not. Right. Um, right. Or you're in a tent. Yeah. What did Chris Rock <laughs> say about about chicks and comedy? Um, He's in your movie, right? Yeah. Well, he's, you know, if you're a comedian, you see, he, one of his things is that you see everybody. Yeah. So you know, as a comedian, what's good or bad. Like, right. the, the audience doesn't. They only see they the people fooled. that get to the top, what for the mean? most part. Well, they'll, they, the, the, most people in the world only know the comedians that have already made it. They don't know anybody. Yeah. So... If they don't think Lisa Lampanelli is funny and and uh, you know Whitney Cummings is funny, yeah. then women they go, funny. "Oh, women are funny." Oh, right. But Chris, but we get to comics. see everybody. That, yeah. You know. So he he was saying like, as comedians, we we know that yeah. there's funny women. Do you see a lot of women that are that have come in and just be like, what do you see the percentage wise? Let's say there's way less women. Let's say there's ten percent of women in comedy. Right. But I could name like five really funny women uh-huh. that you wouldn't argue with. You know that are hilarious, like because somebody was saying you wouldn't want to do an all woman show because you couldn't find enough funny women. But I, if you, you're Morgan Murphy, Tig, Sarah. Well, to me, it's like an all anything show is just exclusive. It's going to be a worse show. It's not going to be great because it's. But you could put together a show of equal amounts guys and girls that were all equally funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you do you could. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there are a lot of really funny yeah. women. Well, what do you think percentages wise in terms of like unfunny people? To funny people, men and women. Like, let's say, how many? What percentage of the male comedy community is just unwatchably bad to you? A lot. It's a lot. There are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. <laughs> but men have more confidence when they're bad. I think. Oh, it's the worst when you see men some fucking really... confident suck ass comic. Oh God! Yeah, you know, sometimes that's all I want. That's the thing. I'm I, when I see them up there just parading around their horribleness. <laughs> I mean, how do they do that? That's I need that. I want that. I mean, I feel like I've got good jokes and I can't even, I get halfway through if it's not working, I'm, I'm bailing. bailing, I'm like, ugh, I start. Yeah, I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm the worst, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how those people do that. And they get off stage and it was like a B minus, C plus set. And they're like, hey, what do you guys want to do later? And I'm like, why aren't you mourning? <laughs> I know, I saw a guy recently oh, on TV taping, eat it, terrible. And um, I didn't want to say anything to him because I didn't want to get into some kind of awkward conversation, but I said to the... Um, one of the producers, uh, Brian Baldinger, I was like, does he know? And Brian's like, he doesn't know. It's wow. Funny. He has no, I was like, how could he not know? He doesn't know. How He's could like, he hey, not good show. Know. He's like, thanks. Oh, wow. Really? Those people are amazing to me. They're amazing. How do you not let it get to you? How do you not want to quit comedy every time? I know. 13 years in and I still, if I have a bad set followed by a moderate set, I'm like, I should look for something else to do. Right. I know. I, I live. I know. I'm like. I'm constantly like. Well, this isn't for me. Yeah. I chose wrong. <laughs> That's a good point about just saying the, the what Chris Rock said about you only see the girls that are like pushed up there. That's yeah. the only ones you notice. That's, so those are somebody else's choices that you get to see. Yeah. Because every time somebody talks about signs, you ever hear people? And I feel like it's a girl thing too. 
but um, something's a sign. I don't know. We were going to see that movie, and there was a commercial for that movie came on. Oh, it's a okay. sign. We should go see it's it. It's a sign of schizophrenia. What I want to be like. <laughs> it really is. If you see too many coincidences. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, because you have another life that you've put stuff into your brain with. You well, if you if your your brain wants to make patterns anyway, but I think if you make too many patterns, that's one of the signs really? of schizophrenia. Oh, it really is. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, what I'm like, I wish I could explain to you what coincidence means. You're just noticing coincidence. Yeah, yeah, not, there's, yeah. There's no signs. There's no right. signs. And if there were signs, it'd be like... ob- more obvious than <laughs> yeah. commercial ran. I mean, yeah, like if God can tell you where to go, why doesn't he just go, hey, y- you should go there. Yeah. That's going to be good for you. Yeah, you know what are good for that? Like... Actual signs. If he put up a <laughs> yes. sign on the, on the street, that would right. help. <laughs> hey, can you just write it in the snow? <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Because... Just trying of... to figure everything out. Seven is leaves fell, and I, my birthday's on the seventh, so that <laughs> right. must be. <laughs> I know people like that. That's God. Like... It's exhausting. It's, it is exhausting. But I must be the same way when you just you, you let your brain pick certain things. So it yeah. must be like you see all the like successful women and you're like, ugh. Right. I don't know. There's something to it. I don't know what it is. I don't want to like not like female comics. And well, I like I like a lot of them. But you're but again, you're So am, is that what it is? Am I noticing that person as like like I think the hardest part about being a female comic is the beginning when you're bad because yeah. guys kind of go under the radar, right, for a long time. Yeah. And then it's fine. And even if you have just one good joke, you're a good comic. People you know, people can see – I can see. I'm sure you can see. You know which guys are um, not necessarily the ones that are going to be great but that are going to continue on in the career and the ones right. that aren't, right? So, but I think for women, you get like a little bit too much of a like, especially I'm sure if you're an attractive woman because people pay more attention to you. And then, success. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, it's terrible. But you're focusing too much on Jen it. Jen Kirkman it's- said that once. She said that on some message board, that alternative message board, what was that called? A special thing? Yeah. And when that was like, when remember right. we all discovered it. And we're like, what the when, fuck? When Patton would write like yeah. 800 word <laughs> Yeah, essays. Is, we just—it yes. was the first thing in writing that it ever like summed yes. up comedy. So we're all like super intrigued by it, and we get mad if they wrote us up wrong. I know. <laughs> Happy if they wrote us up. Oh, but um, she was on there, and she was talking about how hard it is, and she was saying that when she was starting in comedy, she got put on premium premium blend, and it was too early. She wasn't right. ready for it, and she didn't do that well. Right. And then she had a really hard time for the next couple of years having people see her as a good comic. Right. Because she was on that thing too early, and it was harder for her. And I was like, I remember reading that at home, going. Are you complaining that they put you on Comedy Central too early? I have showcased 19 times for those <laughs> I know, motherfuckers. I know. Is that what your complaint is? It's right. harder for women right. because of that? Right. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, that's you, that's why you got to fucking work hard because you got to be ready for whatever thing comes yeah. your way, you know? It's not like some magical thing that's, you know. What do you mean? I mean, like, people think comedy is just like, oh, I'm just funny. I'm just good at oh, it. Right. Um, no, you it's just do it. magical. Like, it just comes to you when, when necessary. It's like you kind of. That's what I always think when, um, when I get too confident for some reason. If my jokes, if whatever jokes I'm writing or working on then are, like, good. Yeah. Then I am start thinking, like, I'm really good at this. I can I do, do and say anything. And then I go up with no material, just do on a subject. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I haven't worked at this part at all. <laughs> yeah, I need to write so this. That's great about comedy. I think you can, never, you can never really get tired of it because when you think you got it, when you're yeah. like, I know now. I get it now. I get how to do it. <laughs> you will fucking eat it yeah. so hard. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I fuck it. all. Damn it. Yeah. You can never, you can never win. Yeah. You can never. When's this movie coming out, by the way? So, um, well, we're in the final stages of closing this deal with On Demand. So um, That's where it's going to be? On Demand? On Demand. Okay. Every every household in America has HBO it. HBO On Demand or just On Demand? On Demand, uh, like Infinity, whatever your Comcast, whatever your uh, okay. provider is. I don't know how this um, you, 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 If you go on On Demand, people know how to get it. But you'll they're going to run um, trailers for it and stuff. So yeah. it'll When's it going to be out? So mid-October, I think, it looks like. Do you think girls get mad at you for not defending female comedy? I think it's, uh, sometimes women do. They, they want it to be a little bit more... Uh, Team girl. Yes, than it is. And it's... I mean, I really wanted to make a funny movie. So that was, first yeah. and foremost, what I tried to do. How was it talking to Joan Rivers? It was cool. She's like a tiny, tiny person. She fits in the palm of your hand. Really? Here's my problem with Joan Rivers. When I used to go, when I just started comedy, and I and I remember going to Largo once, when that show was like really hopping, yeah. um, and watching, and like a couple of people made jokes shitting on Joan Rivers, 
<laughs> I know. You know, and it was like a standard, like, uh, that girl's ridiculous. Yeah. We can all make fun of her. And then a movie came out, and I saw all these alternative comments going, like, oh, she's wonderful. I know. I was so mad. I was like, what? You guys lied to me. Yeah. You can't just like her now. <laughs> right. I know. And so I didn't see that movie forever, and then I saw it. I was like, oh, yeah, she's pretty badass. But I'm like, why did I believe his alternative comments? Why do they hate her in the first place? <laughs> Plastic surgery? Was that it? But they all know who to hate and who to like, right? They all the know. Group. It's down a party line. When I was, oh, one time I they said, hated a- Tim Allen for making yeah. kids movies. I don't know why. I know. But okay for David Cross. Yeah. Yeah. That like, oh, we'll look the other way. Fine. <laughs> like, um, when I was at a party at David Cross when I first moved to LA, uh, David, uh, Dave Rath uh-huh. and... Uh, you know, everyone was watching the, the everyone was watching music videos on his huge screen TV, and everyone would like cheer when a one that came on that they liked, and yeah. I couldn't figure it out. Like, what? How does everyone know? Like, how does everyone have exactly the same musical taste? Uh-huh. And I go to my friend um, Karen Kilgariff. I was like, How does? I don't understand. How does everybody know? She goes, Oh, just watch Janine. They watch Janine and Janine decide, Garofalo. She decides and, for everyone. And I thought she was joking at first. I kind of laughed. And then she's like, no, no. And then wow. Janine would be like, oh. And then everyone would, yay, <laughs> to the music video. Wow. There's a girl, Karen Kilgariff. I remember her being like legitimately funny. Great, great. Canadian. Does she do comedy anymore at all? Well, she was for years Ellen DeGeneres' head writer. And she, but she stopped doing stand-up for it. I don't know. I haven't, I, you know, I haven't... Sp- Spoken to her outside of Twitter for... Like I've never seen years. her. Where does Ellen shoot? New York or LA? In LA. Yeah, I've never seen her, even on lineups. Like even on the web where somebody's telling... Occasionally you know. I see her. Really? Uh, yeah, on a lineup or something. Girls but, Guitar Club. But she could have been Fabulous. a huge uh-huh. successful comedian, but I guess she just went another way. Yeah. I wonder if that's a thing with girls too. There is the Well, you got to make thing. money, you know, yeah. and stuff. But, there's but the, a lot of guys do that, too. They're, they become writers and get they, out. Yeah. Absolutely. I know that happens a lot. But I feel like more guys kind of come back to it or stay with it while they're trying to do the writing. Maybe not. No. What about motherhood? What about that? That has to hold women back. That is a big part of it. Because what happens is, is that right around the time where you start getting good and you should start headlining. The clock you know, starts going off. You're, you're, yes. You know, at that point, you're you know somewhere in your 30s, probably. And, and I uh, do this. You're like... Yeah. So, and then when women have children, like I had a, um, my daughter's going to turn five next week. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I genuinely, I, I didn't want to go on the road anymore. You wanted to stay at home. I wanted to stay at home with her. And um, so mm-hmm. I just do, literally, I feel like I, I've done every, you know, Italian seafood restaurant in the tri state <laughs> area. <laughs> I just, just anywhere out. that will have me where I can drive back home. Oh, uh, yeah. So this is the first. Last week and this week are the first two weeks that I've actually started now. Getting paid? Getting back into it, like going. Well, no, I mean. I've got oh, wait, to, since you. Since it, so. Since you had your baby? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That's five years. Yeah. Six if you count. Right. Like, so I haven't gone on the road. Time. Occasionally I go, I go on the road with Rich. The whole family will go. Okay. You know, and um, one time I did a, um, a weekend foray, but I drove back the Saturday night. So I really was only gone one night. You know what it is about girls too? I just realized this. Guys that like the girls or are attracted to them will praise them up and down. Like praise a shitty comic that they're attracted to, like up and down. I don't think that's true. Really? I never got that. How would you know? Well, I'm, I feel like there's been guys in comedy that have been attracted to me. Yeah. And they still shit on your comedy? Um... I think, I've seen this, th- or if a guy like thinks he has a chance with the girl, maybe prior to. But girls aren't that yeah. dumb. You just don't think like a girl. No, no, they brag to other guys. They'll be like, no, 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 so and so is really good. Let's, oh, let's really? Think about, let's think oh, I didn't know that who's bad happened. Out of comedy, who's done with comedy now? Who's kind of shitty? A girl wise. A girl. That's, yeah, from ten, twelve years ago. Uh, I don't know. I uh, no, whoever it is. Like, let's just. Who are you talking about? I don't know anybody. What let's is say the it was point? you. Yeah, okay, the point is like me. if I if I had this crush on you. Oh, okay. And then my friends like talking about girls in comedy. Like, no, Bonnie's fucking hilarious, dude. Oh. No, you're wrong. She's fucking. Well, I didn't awesome. know guys did that even. Yeah, and the people, everyone else, is like, what do you t-? like? We all agree that that person is terrible, except this one dude well, who's Doug- screaming about how awesome she is. Not even not terrible, awesome. Doug Benson used to do that all the time with the girls that he dated. Fuck and yeah, he, he did. He admitted in the movie, although we didn't put this part in the movie, but yeah. um, he admitted in the, you know, on camera that um, none of the girls he dated were funny. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 
But That's like, funny. Yeah, That's but funny. he would always but he would tell them how funny they were. He would always tell everyone else how funny you're right. He'd he booked would, them on shows. He'd yes. like, yeah, let's go. I was like, what? Melinda Hill's on your show? Come on. <laughs> did he date Melinda Hill? No, but I think he oh. wanted to. But I remember she did like UCB, his, one of his right. nights, like the big show. And I was right. like, motherfucker. God, I right. can't even get on right. that show. Right. I remember, but fuck. Well, because they want to believe that the person that they like, or is, maybe. has talent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like a normal thing, I guess. One of my friends aren't as funny. I like I I rate them like probably forty percent higher than they are. <laughs> right, right. You know, I'll see their good sets as normal, and their as and most of their sets as abnormal. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, because you want your friends to be funny. But and you also did really don't want your friends to be that much funnier than you. Oh yeah. That then it gets. Yeah, funny. your friends that are worse than you, you rate as funnier yeah. than they are. <laughs> your friends and then that your are friends that are funnier than you. than you, you're like he's overrated. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he's a little. Yeah. Yeah. I put Chris Rock. We did a show once, and uh, not a show, like a short. Me and my friend were having going to have a fight, like, and we're going to invite everybody, all the comics. We had like a training montage, yeah. And Chris Rock was there, and we were like so worried about asking him to be in it or something. We could, we were like, oh, we agreed, like none of us are going to ask him. We're not doing right. this. So instead, my friend just got some like dumbbells and started working out outside of his car. Um, right when he got off. <laughs> so we had to be like cameras set up just so he could walk by. And my friend was like, hey. And Chris Rock like, hey. And then he gets in his car and walks out <laughs> and drives away. And we're like, we got Chris Rock in it. <laughs> so retarded. <laughs> Damn, I'm trying not to wear that word. Fuck. Yeah, um, you gotta work on it. I feel like it's a bad word. I feel like it's not, it's not expressing what I wanted to express. I feel like, though, that's a word. Um, and... You know, that, that like people who get mad about other words. Yeah. I, I mean, I've seen it on Twitter where they're screaming about, you know. You're retarded for using And then, yeah, and then like they'll rape. go like, they'll be like, you're, you know, some argue back and then they'll go, you're retarded. You don't know what you're talking about. It's you like, Jew people I, down. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> if you're going to hold yourself up as this, you know, ethical person that knows right from wrong, that yeah. you should be nobody, arguing nobody, with the word retarded. Yeah, nobody looks w- inward. Nobody ever looks yeah, inward. They're like, what I say is fine. Yeah. I'll tell you a story about my sister really quick. And then I don't know how long you do these things I don't for. Know, I just is go until we're done with this. More subject. than a week. Um, the, uh, so my sister Lynn um, mm-hmm. has Down syndrome. Uh-huh. And she's. Developed it or born with it? She's born with it. Okay. You can't develop it. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, yeah. That would be weird. Yeah, okay. So, you, okay. You we're going to have to change your facial features <laughs> <laughs> because you've developed. Your eyes are normal. We're going to use glasses um, to make them look really big. Do. Um, so, um, she's really funny. Very, very social. She's another person. She can, High functioning or low functioning or middle? She's middle, but she's very, so like, she's really good at small talk. People love talking to her because. Wouldn't that she, be all she, she has? I think so. I think that's why she's good at it. Oh, like, okay. You know, she's. She's excited about talking about, you know, the weather or the day okay. or your bar stool, whatever. So um, we, w- she's really into Elvis. So we did, Rich and I did shows in um, Memphis. Tennessee, and, yeah. And we took her with us so that we could go to oh, that's Graceland. Nice. Yeah. And um, it was funny because we took her to radio with us in the morning. And, you know, when you go to radio, you're like, hey, we're here for radio. <laughs> She was like, hello, I'm Bonnie's <laughs> sister, Lynn. And then all of a sudden, everyone was acting better. Like, really? You know, but it was like a suddenly, She was so positive? She was happy and people were shaking her hand. And also, they, you can the one kind of benefit of having Down syndrome as opposed to just being mentally retarded is people know right away. Oh, yeah. There's no see. question. They're not looking yeah. at you like, is this a weird person? Yeah. They're like, oh. And so they're gentle and nice most of the time. And... Um, so it was fun to kind of have her around as this person that went ahead of us and put people in a good mood before yeah. we got there because Rich and I are both <laughs> such assholes. <laughs> That's why I never got Rain Man. I was like, so Tom Cruise finds out he's got like a some sort of weirdly underdeveloped like brother and he's like, get in the fucking car. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. I'm heartless in the beginning of this movie. You know what's weird? I find that very strange too. Like all these movies and stuff where they depict like somebody who's mentally handicapped or, and everyone being mean and making fun of them. I lived in a re- really rural northern Canadian place yeah. I, I grew up on a farm and you know so there's yeah. a lot of like nobody Small made town. fun of my sister really no she was probably one of the most popular people in our high school really very she went to regular popular. high school she was integrated into regular high school oh, yeah nice. their class but it's weird like when i see that i it's, something seems untrue about it that people are just that yeah. kind of heartless I, the worst that happens is when you're like in fourth grade, you stare because they don't yes. look like you expect people yes. to look, and you're like, well, or maybe you don't really want to play with them or something. But are people really yelling like 
Hey, Rita, I want to eat this dog <laughs> no, poop. No, they're only yelling at regular I mean, people. Who's doing that? <laughs> um, I don't think it's... I, I, so when you hear someone called... If I called Rich a retard... Right. Do, does any part of you go like, actually... Is Down syndrome not retarded? Is that like a whole different thing? No, it is. It's, okay. it's definitely mental retardation, and, and um, is that a, a, Rich word, has you, it, so it's perfectly fine. <laughs> when you hear that, do you get a little like offended or like uh, like upset? I don't because I feel like they're just words that people. But I do feel bad when Lynn's around and people yeah. are using that word because um, I remember she, she came to a show and, and Natasha Legere was on stage and Natasha was said um, retard in her thing and yeah. Lynn goes oh, like that to me and I said uh, I go oh no no she means stupid. I mean, she means um, dumb. Yeah. No, she means like you can't explain it away. Like, she just means like a, a weird person, and everything you say is like. Yeah, I remember making a joke at some pizza place on, a, a, on stage, and there was a retarded person in the back, and I said the word retarded, and I was like, "Don't be a retard if you." It was just like fuck. I've said it on stage, and I'm, I'm against saying it, but I've said guy. it on stage because sometimes you just say things to survive. Yeah, I'm not situation. even afraid of. I'm more afraid as a comedian. I'm like, I'm expressing the wrong thing here. Right. I'm I'm going to get someone upset, not for the reasons I want them yeah, to. Yeah, like, I'm saying something I don't believe in. That's yeah. what I hate. If, when if I'm I call, just saying yeah. something to get a laugh, and it's like... If I call a black guy a nigger, it's like, you're getting what I'm saying. Right. You're, you know, you might be offended, but this is what I'm going for. Right. But if I call, you know, you a retard, then it's like, no, someone else is going to be pissed off yeah. for a whole different thing. Right. I got to stop using it. Um, so to... we were at in Memphis oh, yeah. and um, Rich, we went to, to the, the club uh, the night before a radio and Rich went and talked to the club owner in the back and Lynn and I sat in the back of the open mic night and we're yeah. watching all these comics and um, we're having a good time and um, one guy got up and uh, he said he had a joke with the word retard in it and I didn't say anything to Lynn, I didn't look over at her or anything and then a couple, you know, they were only doing three minutes each and then a couple comics later I go, you having a good time? She goes, No. <laughs> I go, why? She goes, oh, you know, that one guy, he said a word that you're not supposed to say. And I just, I didn't know it. I was like, oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear it. She goes, you know, two words you can't say, nigger and mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> like she fully said nigger, but wouldn't say the word retarded. But there was like all these black people. I was like, no. You know? So, <laughs> so it's funny. So then we went out and um, the guy was um, in, the, in the bar area. And she s- went right up to him. She doesn't have any problem with this kind of confrontation. She yeah. was like, you said a word that you shouldn't say. And, of course, he knows immediately because he's to looking a at her face. Yeah. And um, he was really sweet. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a bad person. You know, he was like – and um, she forgave him immediately. And um, he goes, hug. And she goes <laughs> – and she gave him <laughs> – and then she grabbed his butt. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, it was so funny. I heard this thing that retarded people are. What different types of there are there? Oh, Down syndrome. What else is there? There's well, autism. I mean, there's so oh, yeah, many that different falls kinds into the of category problems. A bit. I mean, you can get in a car accident and just. Okay. Well, I heard the one. Maybe it's some Down syndrome. Thinking, I don't know. That they're all super horny. Well, and they don't know. <laughs> that's not true. I, probably not. And the, but they don't know that you're not supposed to act on these feelings all the time so they're just when they're in homes together they always just fucking giving each other hand jobs and just touching <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if that's true I mean I'm sure they have they have woman. the same emotional well like if I didn't things think it was that wrong, go on in a regular person so I'm sure however much that you are horny yeah. they right but if guy, I didn't know it was wrong some guys I'd be are horny constantly. some guys aren't some women are some women aren't so they probably have the same amount of yeah I feel weird talking about it I'm not an expert I just feel like but when I've I get never horny, seen I wouldn't two retarded people jerking, jerking each other off. Okay. I will say that. Okay, thanks. That's <laughs> the question. Wait, there's something I was going to say about fuck. I forgot now. Christ, this was I had good. It, it was like serious and then funny and then serious. Oh, yeah. Goes back we, and really forth. Went, we really went deep. Oh, I know what it was. Jerry Jewell. What is she? The, uh, oh, the Facts no. of Life girl. What is she? No, she has uh, cerebral palsy, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, okay. so her mind is fully oh, totally fine. intact. Yeah, so you're a palsy people I feel bad for because I'm like, oh, people treat you like you're dumb, right, huh? No, right, always. Right, And then, uh, we some on... of them are, though. See, that's where it gets tricky. Some of them are Because dumb. they're just people. Oh, yeah. So. We know a guy, we knew a guy, this guy, Stevie Z, who was living with Steve Simone for a while, and he was, like, pretty smart, but severely, um, mm-hmm. that, whatever that was. What is it called? 
what is that one? What did you just say it was? Cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, yeah. Um, but then we know this other guy, David Wester, who's from like central Washington state. And he's just a redneck. Right. He's just a dumb redneck. <laughs> right. But he carries a knife around. Yeah. Palsy. But he's still like half is like, oh, no, you are stupid. <laughs> right. But, yeah. I don't know. Right. But Bertie Stevens was on stage once. He was like yelling at David Taylor once for being too mean outside in the back mm-hmm. before he went on stage. Uh, he's like, you're too mean, David. You have to deliver kinder lines. Right. You need it's positive energy, all that stuff. And then he goes, guys, if you want to learn something, come on stage. I'm about to go on. So we're, it was like real late at the store. So we're like, we'll go on. You know, we'll go in there and fuck around with them. There's eight people or yeah, less yeah. in the crowd. Um, and he doesn't do any impressions. But then somebody, Stephanie Escajeda, got mad because she wanted to go on. And he was just running the light because it was right. like the end of the night. He goes, oh, I didn't realize. She goes, Brody, there's people here. He goes, oh, I'll, I'll do crowd work. And he goes, what's your name? He goes, some lady. And she, uh, she was like, Tammy or whatever. And I was like, and what's your friend's name? She goes, Jerry. And she goes, oh, like Jerry Jewell? And <laughs> And and I was in the back going, hey, Brody, that's actually Jerry Joel. Yeah. And he's like, what? And she goes, yes, it is. It's, it was her. She was sitting there. No. Yeah. And Brody, who never, ever gets mean and never does impressions, just did this thing at this girl who has cerebral palsy. Oh, horrible. And he was like, what? Really? And she goes, There goes yeah. it. We've just proven ourselves wrong that people aren't mean to handicapped people. Uh-huh. <laughs> then, yep, they are. <laughs> he put his head down in his hands and he goes, I got to go. I can't. I'm, I'm so sorry. I got to go. And he hid in the main oh, room. Oh, God. Right left. Yeah, because there's no getting out of it because it's like, oh, if you say like, oh, I wouldn't have done that if I'd known that you were here. It's so still, I so would, would still make fun of. Back. Yes, I will make fun of you behind your back but <laughs> the odds that he gets mean for the first time oh god and does an impression of her when, and happen to ask her instead of that, anybody that's else a sign. that's a that's sign that's a sign of what no, I don't know but you should quit comedy <laughs> um yeah why doesn't she do stand up anymore I didn't guess, she used to do yeah, stand up yeah I think she did yeah like she can't have had more than 10 minutes right I don't know 15 I mean wasn't it all just like I have no idea. 80s comedy was all like, this is what I am. Right. I think that's all it was. Right. I remember when I started, people would constantly be like, you've got to talk about growing up on a farm. I know. Like that was going to be my thing. And it was like horrible every God, time. I hate that. When they all pushed you into doing this certain thing. Yeah. I remember thinking it out though. They were like, look, you're from Maryland. You're a Jew. Like, you know, what's that? I'm like, Judah Friedlander is also from Maryland and a Jew. But yeah. our acts are nothing alike, and they <laughs> right. shouldn't be. Right. Because there's more to us than that. There's, there's plenty of people who grew up on a farm. I mix you guys up all the time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I wear my second place hat, like, constantly. It's funny. I don't think of Judah as a Jew. You don't, right? No. He is one. But no, he doesn't, there's nothing about him that exudes that at all. Right. And he shouldn't. Right. It's got nothing to do with him. I heard he's super cheap. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, not. I don't know either way. <laughs> that was my one stereotype. I thought I'd throw I like that guy. Um, all right. Do you have anything to add before we leave? About I had a comedy? great time. No. Thanks. Do okay. you have like a Twitter or like? I do. Um, what is it? You can decide if chicks are funny or not. That's your Twitter account? You can decide if chicks are funny or not? <laughs> no. <laughs> By following me. Um, Bonnie McFarlane. That's my Twitter name. How do you spell McFarlane? B- well, I'll spell the whole thing out. Okay. You ready, guys? B-O-N-N-I-E-M-C-F-A-R-L-A-N-E. Okay. Nice. Follow you on there. Yeah, there's some funny people on Twitter. There's a lot more funny girls on Twitter. I think Twitter, honestly, I feel like girls are really good at Twitter. Yeah, quick, short quips. Yeah, and I'm like, what? Yeah. yeah, Morgan Murphy really impressed me when she took to Twitter. Yeah. I was like, Jesus, these are really... And the jokes aren't slow. That was my only problem with her on stage. It was like, start the next joke. <laughs> I know. I was like, I've held myself back from literally strangling. Go. Her. You can get 12 <sighs> more jokes in. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> what is... Yeah, like, I but don't know Twitter, why you're... I can read you're... at my own pace. <laughs> so I know. it's like, oh, these are, these are awesome. <laughs> I know, right? You can read them at your own pace. Yeah, what is that? How come girls are better on Twitter? Because nobody cares, really. I guess because you just read. I don't know. I, I thought that the other day. I was like, Stands on its own. You don't get to read their voice. Fuck our fear. He didn't pay for none of this goddamn music. Cheap ass fucking Jew.